Well, welcome to Guamarino Forest. Uh, we know that there's around about 200 odd kiwis in this forest. Now, that's nationally significant for North Island brown kiwi. Um, and numbers have been reasonably stable. Um, our radio telemetry work showed that each pair occupies around about 25 hectares, so that's a very large territory mm. per pair. Um, there's a preference for natural cavity burrows in native vegetation, but they do readily utilise natural cavity burrows in pine forest. We also, through the transmitters, were able to time the amount of time they spent feeding and in what habitat type. 42% uh, of all feeding occurred in pine forest, so it's a, a very valuable food source. Um, it can often have a higher invertebrate biomass than native vegetation. Um, <clears throat> we followed a number of birds during harvest, uh, which is why we're here. While this area was being clear felled, we had pairs monitored just up there, there, there and there. Um, and we released about 27 chicks like this with transmitters and followed them as they dispersed out until they became territorial, found mates and started breeding for themselves. Um, we wanted to see if young non-territorial birds were affected differently to harvest than territorial adults. Um, <clears throat> the survival rate of those chicks it was about 74%. Now that's way better than what happens naturally in the wild in unmanaged populations where 95% of all chicks born will be killed by stoats within their first three months of life. So to overcome that predation barrier we perform Operation Nest Egg. So the adults that we fit with transmitters are all males because they're the ones that incubate. And we can find the nests, the incubation period is 72 to 84 days so it's very long. Um, at around about the 60-65 day mark, we remove the eggs from the nest. We take them to Kiwi Encounter, Rainbow Springs in Rotorua, where they finish that incubation process, hatch the chicks out, and they bring them up to 1,000 grams in weight, and then we return them to the forest. And that gets the birds past that vulnerable stage of stoke predation. You're saying that you raise them to where they're stoke -proof. able to be stoke proof. Does that mean that they can defend themselves, yep. or they just the stoats? Yeah, I mean, the, will, will stoats still try to attack birds? Yep, yep, they will. Um, yeah, they are supposedly stoat proof, which yeah. means that yes, they can defend themselves against stoats. Right, so it's yep. just claws out and. Yep. Oh yeah, they're, they're, these guys are aggressive. Yes. They're not, they're not the cute, fluffy, cuddly things. They're not the ones you see in the souvenir uh, shops. Bad-tempered, grumpy, kick, hiss and spit type Right, so they yep. make enough noise and whatever that hopefully the stoat goes away. No, they'll, well, they'll, they'll attack. Yeah. But if a possum tries to use the same burrow as a kiwi, a kiwi will beat the crap out of a possum. Yep. Yeah. Yep. yep. But they'll probably smash eggs in the process. Yeah. So, right. Um, that's, yeah, one of the threats of, of okay. possums. Okay. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. No, that, I mean, uh, in this forest, adult males are about 2.2, 2.3 kilograms. Females will go up to 3k, oh, 3 kg. a lot bigger than this though. Yeah, much oh. bigger. Yeah. So you think even the ones that are raised in captivity, which is most of them, if, if you ideally, I mean, do they still have that instinct to fight? Yeah, absolutely. Um, it, even though it's a captive situation, it's it's very well controlled as a hands-off approach. Yeah. Um, yeah. Also, ki kiwis are born pre-programmed, ready to go. Yep. They are independent. There's there's no parental care or feeding. Um, right. um, so yeah, they don't they don't need that natural training process. It's just instinctive. Mm -hmm. and they just just do what they have to do. And when they're growing up, they're foraging for food. You you plant the worms, and they're they're, they're basically looking right they're, from the start. Or they're they're foraging for food in the ground at one day old. Right, yeah. and that, that's the system that you guys set up, you, you, you're you not giving them bowls of food at the end of the day like a dog? It's um, a, at Kiwi Encounter they do, Yeah. Um, they do to start with, up, up to, I'm not sure what their regime yeah. is, but a certain age limit, Yeah. and then they're reducing it, and then they're like halving it, quartering it, and, and spreading it out, so they so got to start the birds finding to go it. looking for it, yeah. and then it's be becoming less and less, so they're encouraged to find their own.
like a full grown chicken. Well, thank you very much. That's been Not fantastic. a problem. No, I'm glad you could all come along today, and I hope yeah. you enjoyed your experience. Excellent, mate. That was awesome. Thanks, Jane. Not a problem. Sweet. Cheers. <laughs>